الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد We continue our discussion with regards to the great and beneficial and upright pillars of the proper creed and proper faith and that all begins with believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that He is the only one who is worthy of worship Tabaraka wa ta'ala because He is the creator and the sustainer and the provider of the heavens and the earth and because He is alive and He never dies and because He is strong and never weak and He never becomes sleepy and He's not hungry or tired and He feeds and is not fed and all of His, of his attributes are attributes of perfection with no deficiency whatsoever and He's the most kind and He's the most merciful and He's the most forgiving and he is the most powerful and strong. And likewise, he is the most severe in punishment for those who turn away and do not believe in him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have seen that he has signs. Signs in his creation indicating his greatness and his mercy and his kindness. And signs in his legislation. Likewise, indicating his greatness and his mercy and his kindness. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also we've seen that Allah, He has angels. And we have seen details about that. And likewise, Allah has sent revelation throughout mankind. Books that have been revealed to prophets and messengers. And we have discussed these affairs in a bit of detail. Alhamdulillah. And this is the proper creed. And this is the proper belief. And continuing upon this way, we have the fifth pillar. The fifth pillar from the pillars of faith and the proper creed and the proper belief. And that is Adimanu Biyom Al Akhir. Al-Iman bi al-yawm bil al akhir And that is to believe, that is to believe in, in the last day. That is to believe in the last day. And the last day, this is the day whenever the people, they will meet their Lord. And many times we will find that Allah has mentioned in His book, coupled together, believing in Him, and likewise believing in the last day. And likewise, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he'll mention many times together, believing in Allah and believing in the last day. Meaning he is the one who has created us. He is the one who has brought us into existence. He is the one who is providing for us and sustaining us. And he is the one who is giving us all the blessings and good that we have. And just as he brought us into existence, he is going to call us back. And we're going to stand in front of him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's going to hold us to account for all of those blessings and everything that we have done in our lives. And those who have good, they will have good. And those who have evil, they will have the likes thereof. So this is what we're discussing. Believing in the last day. Believing in everything that will happen after death that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us about. Believing in everything that will happen at the time of death and after death from what our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has informed us about. So therefore, at the time of death, the hereafter begins for every individual. And because of this, the people of knowledge, they mentioned that al-qiyamah qiyamatani. Al-qiyamah qiyamatani. The qiyamah, the resurrection, which is also a name from the names of the Day of Judgment and the last day, Yom al Qiyama, the Day of Resurrection. There's two Qiyama Sugra wa Qiyama Kubra. Qiyama Tun Sugra, this is the minor resurrection. Wa Qiyama Tun Kubra, this is the major resurrection. And the minor resurrection occurs for every individual whenever his soul leaves his body, meaning at the time of death. At this time, this is the minor resurrection and he enters now and to the hereafter. And he realizes that he is a creation and he realizes that he, there are angels and he realizes that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the truth. He realizes that with certainty, everyone will know. Everyone will know. And at this time, there is no opportunity to do righteous deeds or to do any good or to stay away from any evil or to believe if one did not believe before nor do any righteous deeds. So, to summarize, and this is very important, the belief in the last day, it means to believe in everything that happens after death that our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has informed us about. After the soul is being taken, the angels, they come and take the soul. And then after that, the issue begins with the grave. 
And there are questions in the grave. And likewise, there are trials and tests in the grave. And also, there is delight and joy in the grave. All of this is from believing in the, in the last day. And also, to believe in the, the resurrection. The major qiyamah, al qiyamah al kubra, whenever all of mankind will come back to life. Whenever all of mankind will come back to life. And uh, this will not occur until the world is corrupted. And there is no one left on the earth remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there's nothing left except for the evil people. And just before that time, whenever the people become really bad, Allah is going to send a wind. And, uh, and uh, is going to cause that wind to take the soul of every last believer. And then after that, there will be no one left on the earth except for the wicked and evil people. And then the, the resurrection will begin. And then the resurrection will begin. And Israfil, he will blow on the trumpet. And the people, they will all, they will all fall dead. And then he will blow again and they will all rise alive, coming out of their graves with no clothes on, with no circumcision. And nobody is going to be worried if people are looking at their privates. And this is something that our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, she said, all of, are the people going to see one another? And whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them that they're all going to be resurrected and brought back to life just in the same manner they were born, meaning with no clothes. Their bodies are going to be brought back together. Their souls are going to be in their bodies. They're going to come back to life with no clothes on. All of mankind standing in one flat level plane. And Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, are they going to see one another? Are, are people going to look at each other? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, oh Aisha radiallahu anha, oh Aisha, on that day people are going to be way more worried and scared and terrified for their souls to, to be preoccupied not looking at one another. They're not going to be worried about that part right there. It's going to be so dangerous and they're going to be so scary because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's going to judge the people and be angry at much of mankind and he will punish them and take them to account for their sins and they'll be cast many of them on their faces in the hellfire and they'll be disgraced in front of all of mankind and others and others on the other hand they'll be honored and they'll be raised and they'll be clothed and they'll be protected and they will be uh, noble and having lofty and high rank and uh, respect and goodness and happiness on that day likewise those followers of the prophets and messengers Especially the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallama. So this is the affair. And likewise from that, we believe that uh, after that as well, that there, is a, there are scales, the muwazin, muwazin and qist, that scales will be set up. And the deeds, they will be weighed. The deeds, they will be weighed. فَمَنْ ثَقْوَلَتْ مَوَازِينُهُ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ uh, and whoever his scales are heavy, then he'll have a delightful life of joy. And uh, those whose their scales are light, and these are those who lost their own souls. So there are true scales, real scales. And they have two sides. And put some in this side and some in this side. And it's going to determine which one is heavy. And clarify the weight. And likewise, the scriptures, the people's scrolls, they're going to see them. Everybody's going to see what the angels have written for you, according to what you have said and according to what you have done. Whether they're going to be flying. With a suhuf nushirat. They're going to come and everyone's going to catch it. Some of them are going to catch their scroll in their right hand. And others are going to catch their scroll in their, in their left hand. Some behind their back. Some behind their back. Why behind their back? Because their hands will be shackled. Some of, and even mentioned behind their back like this because they'll be shackled behind their back because they're going to be from those who are going to be cast in the hellfire. But those who catch their book in their right hand, they're going to say, ha, He's going to say, Oh, look, 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 read my book, read my book. <laughs> like, he's very happy, check it. Look, look, I got good deeds. I knew I was going to meet my record, I knew I was going to be resurrected. I believe in Allah in the last day. So I was preparing. Look, look, look. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Look what I did. Look what I did when I was alive. And as for the other one who receives his deeds in his left hand, he's going to say, Oh, I wish I never even knew this. Oh, I wish I never even had my reckoning. I wish I just died and was never brought back to life. Oh, man. I can't even help myself no more. Nothing that I did ever helped me. And it's going to be destroyed. It's going to be punished and humiliated. We believe in all of these affairs. This is from... But even in the last day, and likewise, there's a sirat that's going to be set up on the top of Jahannam. 
And in order to get to paradise, you have to cross the Sirat. So the Sirat, the Sirat al Mustaqim. It goes from the, the plains of, of the resurrection across the back of the hellfire and to the gates of Jannah. And no one went to Jannah except he has to go across that. And there will be people who go across this Sirat like the lightning, so fast. And others, they're going to go across like a swift wind. And others like a riding horse, fast one. And others like a, a, another animal. And some of them are going to go across running. And others walking. Like that's how fast they're going to get across. And other people, they're going to go across crawling on their bottoms. And others, they're going to be cast and snatched by hooks that's on the side of the path. And thrown into the hellfire. And thrown into the hellfire. So this is a major affair. And uh, the Sirat al Mustaqim in the hereafter, how do you get across safely? By traversing a Sirat al Mustaqim safely in this life. So here is another great benefit. May Allah bless you, my beloved children. A Sirat Siratani. Likewise, the, the, the path, the straight path, the bridge is two. There's a straight path in this life, and there's a straight path in the, in the hereafter. Allah, uh, we say in the Fatiha, in the Fatiha Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. So, the straight path in this life is by believing in Allah and believing in these pillars that we're discussing and establishing that in one's life and obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very, very, very diligently and very, very, very truthfully. And taking him as the role model and loving him more than we love our own families and our own mothers and our own fathers and our own children and our own selves. And taking his way and preferring that, taking the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and preferring that and following that way and, the, and avoiding and, and avoiding all of the misguided understandings and those different doubts about the religion and the innovations and misinterpretations and the false creeds and the false ideologies that the people claim, even from the Muslims that are innovators and they innovate different ways in their religion to avoid those things and stay away from them because you have knowledge. So you can see that it's falsehood and you leave it. And also to avoid the sins and to avoid the actions of disobedience and to avoid the desires and the lusts that our hearts crave, that's not permissible for us. To leave those off likewise and follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the straight path in this life. Those who stay away from these doubts and misconceptions and innovations, they're called shubuhat. And those who stay away from the sins and the lusts and the impermissible actions and statements and deeds, they're called shahawat. Then they'll go straight across the, the bridge in the hereafter by the mercy and the grace of Allah. Yahdihim rabbuhum bi imanihim. Their Lord will guide them by way of their faith. But... Those people who are snatched up in this life by these misguided callers and they listen to innovators and they get snatched up and they start f following the creed of the Khawarij and talking bad about the rulers and speaking bad about this country. What are they doing in that country? Or they get snatched up and they have the false creed and they believe that falsely and misinterpreted interpretations of the names and attributes of Allah or they have other deviant innovations and ideologies that are contrary to our Islam. The, the Islam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions. Or there are people who fall into sins. And they follow their desires and they look at whatever they want to. They don't even care about the command of Allah and His favors. And they listen to whatever they want to and they eat whatever they want to and they get money however they want to. And they don't even care about the commandments of Allah and the prohibitions of Allah. And they wear whatever they want to and dress however they like. And they don't care uh, about what Allah says and what Allah allows. And the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, when they just follow their desires and disobedience. Then they're being snatched up likewise in this life from those whims and those desires. So in this life, people are snatched off the straight path by following misguided concepts and ideologies and misinterpretations and innovations and creed and belief and, and knowledge and methodology. And likewise, others, they're snatched up off of the straight path by sins and lusts and desires and loving to follow whims and do whatever one, somebody likes and following the majority of the people or the popular people or the people that look cool and likes like this without even analyzing the situation. Is it pleasing to Allah or not? They're getting snatched off of the straight path in this life. Those people who are snatched off the straight path in this life by the shubuhat and the shahuat, they're the ones in the hereafter when they're going across the bridge and they're on their way to the gates of paradise, they get snatched off. What do you have to 
وَلِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ So the shubuhat and the shahawat, they snatch people off of the straight path in this life. And likewise, because of that, and accordingly, in the hereafter, they'll be snatched off of the sirat that leads to the paradise. That leads to the paradise. So this is an indication of the importance of actions and deeds uh, that are based upon the proper knowledge and proper understanding. And knowledge is light. And by way of that, you can see the falsehood of innovations. And you can see the falsehood of misguidance and misinterpretations. Be like, where do you get that from? That's not true. That's not according to the creed and the principles of Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah. Why are you saying that? Why are they doing that? Oh, that's falsehood. And you leave it. You stay away from it. And you know that they're falsehood. Even if they said that it's really good and really cool and they have a whole bunch of followers. You'll have knowledge and be like, man, these people are ignorant. They don't know nothing about the Sunnah of the Prophet. Audhu billah. Alhamdulillah ladhi hadana li hadha. Oh, we praise Allah for guiding me and showing me the correct way. And likewise, staying away from the sins and fighting oneself, fighting one's own desires and fighting one's own mind in order to obey Allah and to leave off the sins when nobody's looking or whenever you're in the company of the bad people. And the lies like this, this is very important. So we have to have knowledge and strong determination to apply that knowledge. In this manner, a person he can be safe in the hereafter. In this manner, a person can be safe in the hereafter. The reason why the people, they're failures and they lose in the hereafter and they have great remorse and regret and they're very sad is because they either did not believe or their belief was not firm in their heart. Their belief in the hereafter. The one who truly believes in the hereafter. And that belief is firm in his heart. And he remembers that he's going to be held accountable. He remembers that he's going to die. And that he's going to go in the grave. And that he's going to be questioned. And that he's going to be held accountable. And that there is a Jannah. And that there is a Nar. The one who remembers this. And this is on his mind often. This will be from the greatest means to carry him. To carry him on the straight path. To perform the obligations good in a good manner. And to avoid and stay away from the prohibitions. But the person who is not hoping for a reckoning. Or he forgot or he's negligent with regards to the hereafter. That he's going to die. Of course everyone knows they're going to die. But some people they act like they're going to live forever. And uh, even the believers, every single Muslim believes in the last day because it's a fundamental pillar of faith we all have to believe in. But some people that belief is deficient or it has, uh, it's like in the back of his heart, he doesn't remember often or he takes it uh, heedlessly or like it's going to be a long way from, from now. But rather, this is not good. The Iman and the hereafter, it needs to be planted firm in the heart. And deep in the heart so that a person can remember that you can have lots of fun in this life, but don't transgress the boundaries. Don't go too far. Don't have fun in a manner that's not pleasing to Allah. You can eat and look at all these different things, beautiful sceneries and beautiful things you can watch and look at and talk about and games you can play and joy you can have and fun and you can laugh. But don't transgress the limits that Allah has set. Don't go away from the straight path. Don't go away from the straight path. If you disobey Allah, that's going away from the straight path. If you don't have knowledge and you believe the wrong thing, and you think the wrong thing about Allah or His religion or His Prophet وسلم, that's going away from the straight path. Don't go away from the straight path. You have to learn the straight path and hold fast to that. And if you do that, then you can still have lots of fun and lots of good in this life, but there's some, some things you have to leave and you can't do it now. But if you do that for the sake of Allah, then in the hereafter, on the day of resurrection, you will be allowed by the permission of Allah to pass across the Sirat. And you will be with those believers at the gates of paradise. And the Prophet of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he will, he will request for the people to enter into paradise. And he will be granted permission and they will all enter. And whenever they enter, they will never leave. And whenever they enter, they will never be sad. And they'll never be tired. And they'll never be hungry. And they'll never argue. And they'll never quarrel. They'll never debate. Rather, they'll be ikhwan. Ala sururin mutakabilin. They'll be brothers. Facing one another in love and in joy and happiness. 
And this is the promise of Allah. And this likewise can be seen. There are signs of this. And from the signs of Allah in His book and the signs of Allah in His creation indicating this affair. And Allah, He has called us in His Quran to ponder over His creation and to ponder over the life and death that happens in this creation to realize that there's going to be a resurrection. And Allah, He, he makes the... Trees, they all die like we see now. The trees are dying and the leaves are dying and their leaves are dead and they're flying away and, it's, and the trees are, are, are bare and there's no leaves on them. And likewise, the ground, many times it becomes barren and, and it dries up and the crops dry up and it goes away. And then after some time, Allah, He sends the rain and He brings the heat from the sun and all of that dead land and all of those dead trees and all of those dead crops, they all come back to life and they all flourish and they grow again. And Allah, He says, وَكَذَلِكَ تُخْرَجُونَ وَكَذَلِكَ النُّشُورُ and this, In this manner you will be brought back to life and this manner will be the resurrection. So Allah, He brings the life to the dead and He brings the dead back to life. He brings the life, He causes those who are alive to die, and He brings the dead back to life. If we look inside the egg, is the egg alive? No, but from that dead egg, Allah brings life. And the seed, is the seed of alive? No, but from that seed that is dead, Allah, He brings life. So Allah, He brings life to that which is dead. He brings life to that which is dead. And likewise, that seed that comes to life and has a plant, now it has more seeds that are dead. And then Allah brings more life to them. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So likewise, we are all going to die and then He's going to bring us back to life. And likewise, from the signs and the proofs of the resurrection that are clear, that we see in this life, many people, they're very good and they're very nice and they're very kind and they're very honest. And they don't cheat and they don't lie. And they're obedient to Allah and they follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And other people, many of them, they're liars and they're cheaters and, they, and they're mean and they're rude and they harm people and they oppress them and they do injustice and they do bad things. Do we really believe that the creator of the heavens and the earth who has created all of this affair in the most beautiful manner, he will create these people and this person, he will live a life of goodness striving against his soul to be nice. And this person will, be a, will live a life of evil, following his desires and doing whatever he likes. And then in the end, they're all going to die and nothing's going to happen to them and they're all the same. No way. No way. That's not from the wisdom of Allah. We see how this creation is created with perfect wisdom. It's mastered in its creation. The heavens and the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars and our eyes and our hearts and our ears and our organs, all of it is mastered and perfect. And then in the end, those who are good and those who are bad are going to be the same. Those who are good and those who are bad is all going to be the same. No, 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 no. Those who are good, they're going to have a good reward with their Lord. And those who are bad, they're going to be recompensed and held accountable for their deeds. So it's not from the wisdom of the most wise. Subhanahu wa ta'ala that the good people are going to live and die and then no reward and the bad people are going to live and die and there's no punishment and they're all the same. This one is not even proper or right. We understand that. So there are many signs clarifying the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal and His Majesty and likewise the proof uh, of the day of resurrection and that we are all going to be brought back to life and held accountable. May Allah make us successful in this life and in the hereafter and protect us from the trials of the grave and from the calamities on the day of judgment and resurrect us with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.